So time to challenge myself with something I've never done before. Barrel hinges. Hey, welcome back. Um, finally get in that project I've mentioned on two other videos. And that is this game box of a friend of mine. So it's already been taken apart. Uh, this was held together by hinges unknown back in the past that allowed it to open up and sit, oops, bang, sit flat like this. Someone at some point removed those hinges and put in these little flat butt hinges. See in this picture what they look like. Uh, not very good. And then they filled in the uh, position where the old hinges were. You see in this picture the, the, the piece of wood they stuck in there. And then because it wouldn't open all the way, and they radiused one edge so it would bypass the hinge. I'm, I'm not sure exactly why, but they radiused one edge. You can see in this picture what I'm talking about. Well, what I'm planning to do is, as I said in the other videos, I'm not going to use the butt hinges I mentioned in one. I'm using the uh, sauce-like uh, sauce um, but uh, barrel hinges, these little barrel hinges, and seeing this picture, what those look like. <clears throat> and what I need to do is I need to first, on this piece of wood that has that radius, I need to cut a 45 degree uh, chamfer to remove that piece of part of the wood where it's been rounded over and then glue on another piece of wood to fill in the space to make that a square corner again instead of a radius corner so it'll look like this one and then sitting like this the these little uh, barrel hinges will go in like so now what they allow this box to do is to open up and lay flat because when you close these up the hinge is buried inside the wood. The, the, the articulating parts of the hinge are buried inside the wood, so then it just open up and sit flat so it's easy to play the game. I can't remember the name of the game, and Jamie probably won't forgive me for that. Normally it's held together by, by a little, uh, there's a couple of uh, um, rare earth magnets in here. They become ubiquitous. So that's what I need to do. And the first thing I need to do, of course, is to turn this in to a square piece of wood again and then start drilling holes and mounting the new barrel hinges. And uh, these things require some very precise drilling and mounting uh, and that's why in the previous video that I did I showed you the, uh, the precision depth stop that I bought for the uh, drill press. So I need to move on now and let's get this recornered, for lack of a better term and then start measuring out and marking in for the uh, barrel hinges. I chucked up my 45 degree chamfer bit in the router table um, with the bearing set back behind the fence. I'm not going to be, no need the bearing at all. Um, I did a test cut right here. Nice, nice, nice piece of uh, maple here. Um, what I'm going to do is sneak up on this. What I need to do is run the workpiece through, crank it up with the handle, Crank it up a little bit again and again and again until I get the cut that I want. And what I'm looking for is a nice, clean 45 degree across where this radius is uh, with no, none of the radius remaining uh, on this workpiece. Now, uh, this was cut with a sander, I believe, by hand, not with a router table, so it's inconsistency. The radius is inconsistent from one end to the other. That's why I have to sneak up on it till I get to a point where I have that nice crisp 45 degree. So when I glue on the replacement piece, um, there's very little line showing. Uh, and it's, it's nice and clean and all that good stuff. So let's get uh, over to the router table again and start cutting some of this wood off.
And there you have it. I have a nice clean 45 degree chamfer along the edge of the workpiece. Um, so now I can cut the piece out that's going to replace what I cut off. Now, uh, I found yet another minor inconsistency in my router table. The fence distances here were a little off. So I left a tiny little, almost imperceptible shoulder on this end. So I made a final, very fine cleaning cut on the bearing itself of the router bit, and that gave me the finished cut I need. Because I need really solid consistency from one end to the other. So next is to cut out the... Uh, the replacement piece that's going in here and then glue it in place. Blade is set to 45 degrees, measured twice to get a nice solid 45 degrees. Um, I've measured over how far I want to cut so I can make sure I cover that 45 completely and then have to remove as little wood as possible. And some may ask, why am I just not cutting a rectangular piece of wood and gluing it on there? Well, I'm trying to match the grain as best I can. So this surface here matches the grain best for the back here of the box. So I'm trying to make it look, uh, match the grain as best I can and make it look as, I mean, you're gonna see the repair. There's no getting around that, but I wanna make it as clean as I possibly can. So let's make a cut. So, what do we got here? Okay, that's going to look pretty good. So the next thing is to, is to glue this thing on here, measure it to length, and I think I want to leave a little bit clear on either side so I can put a, a veneer in to match the side grain as the best I can, because otherwise you'll see end grain where this 45 is glued on. So I'll make those measurements, make the cuts, and we'll glue this on. Slight change in plan. So the triangle glued on very nicely, but I want you to look at something here. This is not a rabbit joint. This is a weird miter joint with an oh, exposed end. But you'll note here, there is exposed end grain there. So if I ran this to almost to the edge and then put a veneer on either end, it would, wouldn't, wouldn't look right here, where this part is right here. So what I did is I cut it to fit within these two spaces here and here, and then cut some triangles to go on the ends, so it'll match the thickness of this right here, and we'll also expose side grain on this instead of end grain. And it won't look like just a thin piece of veneer right there. So let me uh, shape this up, and then we'll start, uh, we'll, we'll get set on drilling the holes for the uh, barrel hinges. I've uh, planed and sanded the, uh, the piece I put in here to uh, match the surface and make it nice and square again so I can mount the, the barrel hinges. And I, I got a little touch up here to do on either end with some uh, stainable filler. But other than that, it looks pretty good. I mean, the grain doesn't match perfectly, but Jamie said don't make it perfect, just make it so it works better. And that's what I'm doing. But I have a question for you. When is 10 millimeters? not 10 millimeters. I'll tell you when. So I want to use these 10 millimeter barrel hinges, which you've seen pictures of earlier in the video. Really nice. Um, I've got two brands here, both 8 and 10 millimeter. I bought the 10 millimeter brad point bit from Lee Valley, and I trust them, and it turns out this is less than half a thousandths different from the 10 millimeter. Nice. I also have an 8mm brad point drill bit from Lee Valley that is a little over half a thousandths different than an 8mm. Great! Close enough for government work or for woodwork. This barrel hinge is not 10mm. Now you see that you watch people do these, install these things on YouTube and, uh, and in other places and you know, other videos or whatever, and they drill the holes and these things slide in with a little bit of resistance, but they slide in really easy. This thing here is 10 to 10 thousandths or more bigger 
than 10, mil 10 millimeters. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot, but I'm dealing with hardwood, first of all. Second of all, there's no second chances. The hole, this is so tight in the hole that if I was to drill the holes with this drill bit and put force these in place, if I made a mistake or if it didn't fit right or if I didn't get it in correctly, there's no second chance. I cannot get it back out of the wood. You'd, ha you'd rip it apart. You'd rip this hinge apart just trying to get it back out of the wood. So that's that. I'm going to, uh, we'll end this video here. We'll come back when I come up with a really good solution. I think it's going to be wind up sanding these. But one other, one other thing before I, uh, I go on this video, I, I, the, the audio may sound a little different in this segment because I had to buy a new lav mic kit. Uh, my old lav mic kit was starting to act up and there's other reasons and I'll do a short video about why I finally actually replaced it other than the fact that it was acting up a little bit. So with that said, um, make great things out of wood and I'll see you next time.